Hey everyone, welcome back for an all new episode of the Wife Like Me podcast. We are here, we are excited, and uh, we're just glad that you're with us. Welcome Kelly Brinkman, hey. Oh, hey, thanks. And Amanda Davison, founder of A Wife Like Me Ministries, friend to us all. We love you, girl. You know what? I love you guys. I love you so much. <laughs> this is like the best part of my whole month. So Kelly and I get together right. and we like go through what we're going to talk about. We decide in advance like what topics we're going to hit. And I look forward to it mostly, I don't know, for many reasons. But one of the reasons is because I'm working alone all the time. And I don't get to like see Kelly. And I know that like what we're going to talk about is so good and yeah. like, er. and so anyway, I love that we get to like share this time with you all listening or watching if you're on YouTube. Hey, um, but this is going to be such a good topic. And we were though about to talk about to talk about something and then you stopped me and I had asked you a question. Now I can't even remember what the question was. We were talking coffee. Coffee. Because you said you got a cold crew. Yeah, you were crazy enough to have a bunch of teens come over and spend the night at your house last night. Good for you. I've heard you always want to be the cool house. You want to be the one where they have the sleepovers. So we're talking about um, cold brew in the morning because we're talking in the summertime. And I went out to my local superstore, got me two glass gallon jars with a little spigot at the bottom. Okay. And put in an entire pound of coffee. So you could do light brew, medium, robust. Okay. Put the whole pound in there, like ground up. And then fill it with water. Tap that off and then throw it in your fridge. The next morning, come out and get a strainer. Sometimes they use it, I guess, for like canning. Okay. I haven't quite entered that phase of life yet, but canning. So a strainer, you put it over the mouth of the other empty jar, pour okay. that coffee over, voila, cold brew, little cream. If you're showing off. Yep. Does it get messy? Like when you have to like strain it? Well, I do it in the sink. So you just pour it through and I guess on the top, there's kind of this thick, rich layer of all the grounds. So I take a wooden spoon and just scoop that into a bowl and I put it in the trash. And then, or those of you that garden, bless, I hear that's like fertilizer. I don't know. I'm not in a gardening season right now. So then you pour it in and let some come out the spigot and there you go. That sounds delicious. And I, it's I, super easy. Yeah. I had bought like a cold brew something from Caribou. Like it's a cold brew ground coffee. I'm so confused. I still haven't used it. It's been like a year. Because I don't know how, I don't know what to do with it. YouTube video, baby. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that sitting in there. Right. Still sitting in there anyway. Right. Oh, ladies. Tell us what you're drinking this morning. Maybe you're listening afternoon, late at night. What are you, what are you drinking? I'll tell you what I'm drinking. Water. Not coffee because it's, I'm living a sad life and I want to be drinking coffee, but I'm not supposed to be drinking coffee. So okay. I'm drinking the Good Earth Sweet and Spicy Original Tea and it is nice, delicious. It's so good, but it's not coffee and I want coffee. Can you tell? Oh, coffee's not that good. Don't worry about it. Good yeah. Earth Sweet and Spicy sounds like you got the best. Whatever. I'm sad. But... It is supposed to be helping, so I'm just going to keep doing it. As long as I don't right. have coffee in my house, I'm fine. Right. If I have coffee in my house, I'm going to make it. So okay. it's just, it's been okay. Anyway, wow, woe is me. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm excited about this episode today. Obviously, I'm excited about all of them, but this is a newer post that came out, and it's by Teresa Bodeker, and she really dives in. So like the whole month of July, we are talking about inner healing. And Mm -hmm. so Teresa dives into 12 different truths about inner healing. Here's the cool thing. I did not. Okay. God like totally sets up all the topics of each month through the year, like a long time ago. Okay. The cool thing is I, this month 
have been co-leading a small group at my church on this topic of emotionally healthy spirituality, right? And inner healing and emotional health, all the things. And so just like how cool is that, that this is the topic that we're diving into the same month, right? That I'm like going through it myself with with some amazing people. Um, But what the interesting thing is, is right away, Teresa opens it up with like this, this choice that we have when it comes to inner healing. And most of us probably want to like run for the hills. Maybe you're not even listening to this podcast episode because you saw the title and you're like, no, thank you. But if you are listening to it, good job. And it's just fascinating to me because when we think about like who we could, like, are, is there anything within me that even needs healing? That's even a, you know, like, I don't even know. What does this mean? Um, I hope that we can lean in and like, at least keep listening to this episode, share right. it with a friend because we all do always have, I believe things that we can be healed, healing, like in the process of, you know, healing from, I'm in counseling every single month because I need it. And this is just like, I don't care who, like how amazing you are. There are things in us that can be processed with someone. I believe God gives us that community for this reason to be able to do that. And so that we can grow and learn more about who we are. So um, I don't know if you want to open it up with anything, Kelly, but I just am excited because I think even the decision to lean in and be like, Ooh, I think there's some things there. That's right. courageous. And so like, that's I've, the hope of this episode. Yeah. I just have to say amen to all that because we can talk about like cute things, but this is a really true and deep thing. And honestly, there's so many good nuggets to think about that this takes a while to unpack. You know, this is one I'm going to need to go back to a couple of times because she's gracious and kind of gives us a little checklist to walk down. And I think that sometimes in our busy, we can kind of skim past things that are really at the root of what we're dealing with. And they maybe manifest themselves in how we act or what we hear ourselves say, or that like huff under our breath when we turn and walk away, right? And this is gives you a really systematic way to unpack all of that and deal with that and furthermore, let that go. So yes. as you know, I'm a potter. And so I do love the reclaim bucket and putting everything in there, every scrap of clay that hasn't been fired, putting it in this five gallon bucket, filling it with water and saying, that's where all the stuff is that I still need to deal with. And I'm covering it with the Holy Spirit and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to break it down to its root issues so that it can be used in the future to make something new. So this is all of that. Yes. And so I'm thinking as you're like talking about pottery and this post, um, there's this verse that Heather Seguin referenced this week in the Wife Like Me Collective. And I just want to read it. It's Hosea 10, verse 12. (laughs) And just like take this in, ladies. Um, It says this, break up your unplowed ground. Break up your unplowed ground. So the ground that's been laying dormant, hasn't been touched. Break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. Uh, Another, I know, another, uh, this is in the English Standard Version, um, break up your fallow ground. I actually looked fallow up and like, what does that even mean? It means like, it means, okay, in some, I should have like written this down because I didn't plan on talking about it, but it means um, to actually like, it's the, it's the worked ground that there has not been planted seeds in yet. So it's been worked, but you haven't planted anything there. So break up the fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. So I, I, 
think of that because, uh, you know, again, what could it be? What might our lives look like? What might our marriages look like? What might our attitude, our hearts, our everyday lives when no one is around, it's just us and the kids or us and the Lord, like what might it look like if we were to actually do that? If we were actually to dig up, examine and lay it out there for the Lord to shine his light on, what might that do for us? Um, And it's a scary idea, but I I think it's hopefully super inviting that we would have courage to pause maybe on some things and actually like lean into the goodness that uh, can come on the other side. In my small group, this sweet man, probably, I don't know, near 70, when we were talking about what it might look like to lean into inner healing, he said the coolest phrase, he said, I want to meet that man. I want to meet that man and I look forward to meeting him. Like the man that will be healed, the man that walks in that freedom, the man that has that hurt healed. Um, You know, like all the, it's just like how, I guess I just love that. And I love that, maybe that picture for us, like, I want to meet her, you know, person who's not holding onto a critical spirit, the woman who um, has finally released that thing, you know, just all like all the things. So anyway. I'm excited. I'm excited. So, oh my goodness. That's great. Yeah. So Teresa shares these 12 kind of truths about inner healing. So yeah. um, the first so, one, oh, go ahead. I think even before, sorry, we dive in. I think part of this, you know, she's saying at the beginning, like a little preamble, she goes, Hey, none of us get out of this life unscathed. So like sometimes I think that one of the ways that Satan can dupe us is in quiet moments to say, you're so weird. No one else is like this. No one else has ever experienced this. You're just bad at handling it. Like Mm -hmm. things like that, that are absolutely untrue. And so she even at the beginning here breaks that down and goes, Hey, just so you know, everyone has their own hard. Yeah. And everyone has things that they're walking through. So for us to sit there and go, gosh, I'm the only one in this room that's really dealing with something big is a bit off. And really to lean in and listen to others and to understand we're not alone gives a lot of community. And it helps me be more courageous to then deal with my own stuff because I know it's different than yours. And I know it's different than other friends, but we each have something, many things, (laughs) that we're dealing with. Right. I think too, that God's really gracious and he doesn't ask us to like jump out our entire purse in front of him. He's like, if you really lean in and listen, he'll ask you to deal with one, maybe two things at a time Mm -hmm. and to really dig in and do that one thing well, and to unpack all of that. And then may have a bit of rest time and then another one and another one. And P.S., if you're wondering, what does the Christian life look like? It's that on repeat. Like, it doesn't matter if you've known him two days, two weeks, two months, two decades, or he's been in your family for two generations. We're talking your personal relationship with him. It looks the same. And that is turn over something, admit that you've not done it well. You need Jesus. He reclaims that, brings it back, uses it for his good. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a nice way to start before then she gets into some checklists and action steps. I do love me a good checklist. (laughs) I love it. And it's, you know, these like main points, like, yes. So she starts off like 12 truths we can take away and like are helpful when it comes to inner healing. First is that And again, this blog post, all of the blog posts we talk about, they're always, it's always linked in the show notes. So you can check this blog post out later if you'd like. Um, The first truth is that healing takes place in safe communities. And she highlights safe, super important. Uh, This might look like different things, but if you don't have a safe community, sister friend, start praying about it. Let us know. We can be praying for you to find that safe community. So good. 
I think that part of the uh, roadblock for us as Christian women oftentimes is actually that the communities we've been a part of are not authentic communities. And therefore, we are not, we don't feel the freedom, even though there is freedom, we don't feel freedom to share and to be authentic because the people we're surrounding ourselves with aren't authentic. And so it might be that it's time to, again, pray about the Lord revealing and showing you new people. It might be that he's saying, no, I'm, I've, I'm asking you to step into that different small group, or I'm asking you just to show up at that thing. Um, just trust me with it or, you know, whatever that looks like. Like also we ladies can be like authenticity breeds and attracts more authenticity. So when you are on it, it might hurt at first if you're not sharing it with a safe person. You might not know until you share and then it's not that safe person. Okay, now you know. But when if we are acting like everything is fine and we're not actually sharing what what is hard, uh, we're not going to be met with that either. So be brave. I encourage you to do that. We encourage you to do that. But um, I just love that first point because I tell you what, like the number of times I've texted my friends, like, please come to my house having a very hard time. Like they come, we meet in our basement. I'm bawling. Like they pray over me. Like it's just, I don't know if I'm, if it is just me or whatever, it doesn't matter, but I need that. And we need that ladies. So if, if you're hungry for that, pray about it and, um, start just again, hearing and receiving what the Lord maybe is asking of you to take a first step in. Right. I think that's so wise to pray for that community, but I'll tell you, I've lived in some really small towns, um, where maybe the pool of people that you know is not that large, or I've moved to new towns and I don't know or didn't know that many people. And so your community can be Jesus and God. So if you're feeling like, yeah, I'm going to start praying that God would bring me some authentic friends who can be real and quite frankly, can send me right back to God's word in ways I don't know how to. And I want to study so that I can do the same and be a good, true, genuine friend. I'm going to pray for that. But then I'm also going to go ahead and get going on this work because I have Jesus at God. Yes. And I've had seasons like that where it has just been me and Jesus and God. And he is able to still bring some of that really deep healing. You know, she talks about eight steps or benefits of healing. And those, I mean, I want to meet that woman on the other side of that. Some of those notice and embrace the good again. So if we do the work and kind of go through and say, this is hard, I need help processing, we're going to be able to embrace the good again. We're going to be able to help others allow God's love and truth to change us, not pass our hurts on to the next generation or to the next friend, to not live life on repeat. I mean, are we raising our hands? I'm raising my hands on all these (laughs) that I want. Not grow bitter and skeptical. I mean, maybe that's the muttering. That's the thing we say, that tape we say in our mind we grow in compassion and empathy for others. And we're able to like throw grace around like confetti because we've healed ourselves. And the last one she says is to be a better friend, parent, people, and wife Mm -hmm. to seek healing from some of the hurts that we have, because otherwise our hurts can come out like shrapnel in our life around us. And anyone who's near just pow, get some shrapnel thrown right at them. Yeah. And that goes right along with her second point. Her second truth is that compassion and kindness is required. So when we're talking and we're looking about looking at inner healing, or even this is interesting too, we were just chatting or uh, the message was on this yesterday at at our church, um, self-judgment, shame, and guilt from yourself or onto yourself or onto others does not bring healing. And I, it's super important it goes both ways, right? So as other people are sharing their struggles, their maybe even just processing um, 
the hard things for the first time, or even then maybe it's just like they're acknowledging them. Um, to just sit with them in that and sit with yourself in that and God, like allow the Lord to just shine that, uh, his light right into that hard place, not having to fix it, not having to plant a seed right away, but just sitting in that barrenness of that, maybe just freshly turned over ground is like a beautiful thing. And so just that reminder of like, no, you don't have to shame anybody in yourself included when you are realizing that there are things there. So uh, the next thing, truth number three, is that just to, she says, notice patterns when it comes to inner healing. So we, she says, we often make the same choices, hoping for a different outcome. When we take notice of patterns, we can make necessary changes. Love that. Super helpful. Right. Um, and even patterns like in communication, difficult things with, with your husband, if like there's um, cycles that you see a rhythm to or a pattern to in the past or with your kids, um, you can even just say, like, I noticed that there's a pattern that whenever I bring this up, we tend to this. Uh, can That's interesting to me. Can we even just talk about that? I wonder why that is. Um this seems to be hard when we blah, 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 or when I talk to my kids about blah, blah, blah. Can we talk about that as a family or something? Like that's helpful. Right. Uh, you don't have to know why or fix it, but just noticing that can also be really, it, it's a sign of emotional intelligence. So yeah, I love that. that. Emotional maturity. I'm continuing to try to seek that. So even this last week, I like raised my voice after I felt like I said something four times and was not being heard. And so last resort, I will raise my voice and I'm trying to, you know, grow out of that. So at least four times when I was asked, I didn't. The last time I did, and I was like, geez, OP, I have said, right? So then I was, spent some time in my room in quiet and had some time to reflect on that. And I'm like, Lord, seriously, please help me, me mature in this area and really express what I'm feeling because, you know, anger is a quick default. So then I got my kiddos together and I go, Hey, here's the real issue. And it's respect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I long to drink out of my own water bottle, my own. And I long to, you know, go to the bathroom without someone talking to me through the door. And I long to like, have you knock at my door before you come in, you know? And so that I was able by the grace of God to see that that's a respect issue and to really see it for what it is. And then to say, you know, I was upset because I really feel disrespected. And I try, I feel like my level of respect is kind of low, like, you know, water bottle, go to the bathroom by myself. Like I'm not talking, you know, you celebrate me every day. I'm just talking something. And then it felt so much better. And I was able to share that with them and break that cycle of, getting frustrated where I just want to be heard. And then to say, you know what, here's really what was going on. So when I'm noticing patterns, uh, they're not pretty, but I try to go back and restitch them. You know, yeah. I'm an art girl. So go there with me. So you remember pot holders? Did you have these when you were growing up? Those itty bitty pot holders that you make with the nylon that you couldn't put anything on because then it would burn. It was this weird thing. Now they make cotton ones. Okay. So Harrisville designs out of, um, oh, the East coast somewhere and they are American made. So you can make these pot holders and then you can even buy the book and weave across, right? At some point, if I'm not really paying attention, I realize, oh, that is, that's not actually woven in the correct pattern. Hold up. Mm -hmm. And I have the opportunity to pull that one out and then reweave it girl, my whole life is reweaving, yes. right? Yes. And to get it woven correctly takes time yeah. and you have to pay attention and it's intentional up, down, up, down. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. It's beautiful. It's so true. And yes, it takes time to undo it and then to decide to put in energy to redo it. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the fourth truth that Teresa shares is, ooh, so good. It's that one hurt will often awaken another hurt. Hello. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. We raise hands again. 
yeah. do this for raising all the hands. Here's the thing that we can take away from this. Like when, <laughs> oh, I mean, I wish we could just like, we could spend a whole episode on this because this is like a unresolved conflict will always remain unresolved. Okay. It will actually build into other unresolved conflicts because whenever we have unresolved conflict, any conflict that happens after is like ripping the bandaid off of that first conflict or the 5,000 other ones or whatever. And so if we leave unresolved conflict unresolved, which PS, we don't even know how to resolve conflict. Many times, I remember a counselor asking me a long time ago, and this is, there's a reason I'm saying this, but he said, uh, Amanda, how do you know when conflict is resolved? And I had to literally take the week until the next session to come back and be able to, like, I think, give an answer, right? But we don't even know oftentimes what it feels like or looks like to experience resolve. So it's important that we, again, if there, you're like, well, how, what does it look like, Amanda? But well, maybe we need to spend an episode on that next week or the, soon. Um, but that's important. So because when we don't have, un, if when we have unresolved hurt, pain, wounds, Anything that comes up again is going to just remind us, awaken us. Um, it feels so fresh and then it's bigger because the other thing isn't resolved. So now there's another thing. We're heaping, you know, poo on top of the poo pile. We have a poo pile at our um, farm. And so I often think about that. It's like, oh, let's just throw another pile of poo on that thing. You know, that's essentially what we're doing. And so we have the ability with, through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to pause and to actually ask Holy Spirit, who is our counselor. You have a personal counselor available to you at all times. And you can ask him, Holy Spirit, what is this in me? What is hard here? Why do I feel hurt? Why do I feel alone? Show me why I feel this way. What do I feel even? Um, And he will begin to show you. You can ask him, call a counselor, message me. I would love to chat with you about that. Whatever, like whatever. But just don't ignore it is the point here. Be Mm -hmm. aware, become more emotionally aware that when you feel hurt, what else is going on? Don't just let it go. Dig in, lean into that. Um, yourself. It's a personal thing we each can do for ourselves. I think sometimes in the Christian community, we can say, well, it's kind of like more righteous to just let it go. Just let it go. It's fine. Brush it under the rug is really what we're saying. Mm -hmm. But then it just like, to go with your poo analogy, it just sits under there and festers and like grows steam Mm -hmm. and makes future encounters terrible. Yeah. So it is not more righteous to say, just, just let it go. It's fine. We'll just be the better person and go. Well, we can all hope to be the better person, but the way to do that is to say, Lord, I'm having a hard time with this. Help me unpack this. And it takes a while. I mean, doesn't it take you a while? Like a season, whatever that is. Bless you in the North. I mean, your summer is what, like three weeks? <laughs> and you know, so seasons can linger. I mean, I'm in the South, so our season's like three months. So that's how it can be healing from something. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this quote by Peter Scazzaro, who wrote Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, which is the book I referenced at the beginning of the, I don't know if I said it, but that's the book. He, this is one of his quotes, ignoring conflict. Get this ladies. Okay. If you're listening, driving, don't stop. Oh. Don't write this down, but later write it down. Ignoring conflict is false peacemaking. Okay. Amen to that. Many times Matthew 5, 9 is referred to as like, blessed are those who do pretty much anything they can to keep peace, right? Who, blessed are the peacemakers who will uh, deny their own feelings, who will, like that's not in scripture, but I'm just adding to it, right? Blessed are the peacemakers who then we add to what that looks like in the Christian community. No, that's a load of poo. The reality is, um, blessed are the peacemakers who go to their brother or sister in Christ the moment they realize they sinned against them. Blessed are the peacemakers who notice there's conflict and don't ignore it. 
Plus, and, and actually go to them in love and respect and ask to have a conversation about it. Plus, are the right. peacemakers who make counseling appointments with their husbands because there's something going on that they just can't put their finger on and need another, you know, um, um, eyes on, you know, right. um, like blessed are the peacemakers who lean into things when they're hard and broken, you know? Uh, so anyway, I just love that quote, but it goes along with this and, oh, right. So anyway, be aware, be, lean in, lean in. Right. And to take everything that we're saying, I mean, always back to God's word. You know, so you brought the the Beatitudes up out of Matthew. That's such a good practice to do. It doesn't matter uh, where we're at in our faith journey, you know, whether relatively new, somewhat into it, you know, still wading into the waters. But out of Romans 8, it really talks about the role of the Holy Spirit to help convict us and help be that, that counselor with us in our hearts. Because accepting Jesus into your life and saying, Lord, I don't do this well. I need some help. And I'm trying to access a holy and pure God, but I can't. And to know that Jesus is that literal bridge who's laid down and has paid a sacrifice so that we can approach the throne of God. And when we do that and say, I mean, it's as simple as, girl, you driving down the road, but let's, you know, take a moment and say, God, I need Jesus and I need him to come live in my heart and lead me and show me and guide me and make this better because this whole life is a whole lot to handle. And what will happen in that moment is the Holy Spirit just floods into you and will then reside in your heart and you're no longer alone, no longer trying to wade through all this um, by yourself, but the Holy Spirit really leading and guiding you. And it's the most like gentle, freeing friendship you'll ever have because then you'll have a truth to measure things against. It won't be this worldly truth that always changes, but that'll be that truth of him. Yeah. And if that is you right now and you like, just, yes, like, Lord, I'm coming back to you. Or for the first time, I want to surrender my life to you. Would you just like, let us know. You can comment on the video or on the podcast or wherever you're listening, or you can email us at info at a wife like me.com. We'd love to, uh, you know, like celebrate, celebrate. Give you next steps, send you a Bible if you would like, if you don't have one, all the things. So yay, yay, yay. Um, the next truth that Teresa goes into is one that I'm currently like leaning into myself. She says to name and grieve losses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cannot fully heal and move on until we name and process like what those specific ones are. And so I've been like in a season of grieving. The Lord has been just showing me that. And so I want to rush it. I want to be done with this now. I want to be on the other side. I am tired of feeling the grief of the loss, Um, but I'm not yet. And so I'm not, I'm I'm trying very intentionally to not rush it um, because I know there are lessons here in this for me, Um, but just to be able to really name that these different losses has been super helpful. So it literally might be journaling and writing down like exactly I'm, I like, this has been so hard to lose that. This has been hard and hurtful and I'm grieving that relationship. I'm grieving that situation, whatever that is to name it. Um, Mm -hmm. so helpful. Yeah. I tried to skip past that a couple of years and found out that you really do have to come back to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turns out. Well, when you're telling us don't rush it, I'm here to say yes, or don't try to skip that. Yeah. Because yeah. that was so freeing for me. And it still is, you know, there's still some relationships that are in my life that um, have caused deep hurt in the past. And I still have to go, go back and go, oh yeah, that's another thing I'm kind of grieving. Yeah. That. I didn't get experience that. My expectation was this. Can we even talk about expectations? My expectation was this. Here's what I experienced. It was different. And so I can't change what the relationship is now today, right? I can change me. Like this whole area changes, but I can't necessarily, well, I can't at all change another person. Yeah. Yeah. And just even to admit the sadness, 
that right. comes along with these, whatever that is for each of us, like there's a level of sadness there and to allow yourself to even feel that sadness, right? That right. that relationship didn't turn out how you thought or it changed weird course, total course different and like, woo, this is yeah. not where we thought we'd be or I thought we'd be. And it's so healthy to, to just recognize that and name it. Yeah. yeah. I think it helps free you up to accept that person for who they are, not our idea of who we think they should be. Yeah. Yeah. Because it turns out God's the only one who's all knowing <laughs> and yeah, we're true. not. And so I've, I've walked into that where I think, oh, because of their role in my life or their particular title in my life, I feel like they should act one way. Mm-hmm. But when I'm able to grieve those things that perhaps I feel like have been missing in the relationship or my expectation, then I'm able to like see them anew and go, oh, like love you for who you are. Yeah. Who, who are you? Let me, <laughs> let me, you know, get to know you more. Okay. Cause I've had some ideas as to how I thought this relationship would work. So that's so freeing. Yes. Yes. I love her next point too. She says nothing ever returns to normal. And you know what? If, Okay, if if we all, like Pete Schizero says in his book, Pete, I'm not even going to call him Peter. He's like my friend, Pete. Right. Um, I feel like he's my friend. He has no idea who I am. Uh, but to assume none of us have hurt would be completely naive. Like we all have some level of hurt growing right. from being human, right? Mm-hmm. And so nothing ever returns to normal. I really think like that's also the beauty of this like ongoing process of the Christian walk of like walking with the Lord. It's like always coming to the end of ourselves, recognizing, oh, I'm not God. Oh, that's not going to turn out how I envisioned. Oh, like that relationship wasn't what I thought it'd be. Oh, like constantly Mm -hmm. like, oh yes, Lord. Like I so need you. And this, like my ideals, my plans, everything that I think, it's just not what might be. And so just to like have peace, like that it might forever now be different. Um, Knowing what you know, processing what you've processed, whatever, right? Um, Because even as we enter into inner healing, sometimes if that requires the work or the conversation uh, or the... um, circumstance of involving someone else, it's, it might not again, go how you want it to go. So to understand and to like recognize this might not ever be what it once was is super helpful. (laughs) Right. I love that. I just want to touch on a bit briefly, like, you know, worldwide situation we've been in in the last several years. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we could say, oh, I want it to return to normal. And I think we can say that it's just a different world now. That is a way to think of this in terms of um, spiritual healing and emotional healing is that it's just a different, it's really different afterwards. And sometimes you can't even totally put your finger on it, but man, go back to some of those benefits, right? And I want to walk in those benefits. So Isaiah 55, 8 says, here's some hope for for all of us, right? Um, That your ways are not my ways. I'm trying to find it here. I'm on 58. Okay, hold up. I'm a paper girl, so you can hear my papers rustling. For your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So if we think, man, in the natural, I don't know how to do this, Lord, you're freed up. We don't know either. And God said, honey, your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. So you can really tap into, honestly, the wisdom of God and how to bring healing both to yourself and perhaps to other person. So Isaiah 55, 8, that's my, that's going to be uh, my dance card this week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So good. Well, we will touch on the rest of her um, truths in the next episode. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a pause on this episode and we are going to um, go through the rest of them 
uh, in the next episode. But every episode, we always pause at the end to, to do something. Uh, I never know what it's going to be. Kelly always brings something up or asks something. So what is it today, Kelly? Well, really just motivated by what Teresa's sharing here. So what does processing look like for you when you do that alone? Because you've mentioned that you meet with a counselor, right? You sometimes have a friend come over and pray with you. So what does it look like when you're processing alone? Some mm-hmm. people may say, you know, journaling, mark up your Bible, listen to music. What's that look like? Mm-hmm. I think we've talked about this a little bit, but the one practice I had never done um, is the one practice that now I crave every day. It's literally, um, I, again, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I, I turn everything off except for I put on like instrumental worship quietly and I lay on the floor and I just listen for him. I ask Holy Spirit to just show me what's on his heart to guide me to whatever. And I just am with him. For me, processing is that now. Um, it's been probably before this time frame where I did that, I would just like talk, like pray. Um, there's still a lot of tears always um, for me, but it just looks a little different now. Um, and then I've, when it seems like when I'm with, when I just am experiencing God's presence, then when I go to the word, it's completely different. So I think for me, what I used to do is go to the word and just like, okay, Lord, like show me what you want me to, which is not, it's better than nothing. Right. But it's different now where I want to know his heart. I want to know, like, I, it's almost like it's the intimacy before, like even, um, how do I explain this? Um, it's like before, let's say I go on a date with my husband, before we like go and have fun on a date, I'm going to sit with him and like, how are you doing? Like, I'm first going to connect with him before we're going to go do something, if that makes sense. So it's yeah. sort of like completely transformed my processing. I guess for me processing, I'm constantly processing because I'm just weird. But that's kind of, you know, throughout the day, like literally worship music or I'm in the car or just like, it's just this constant thing, like, because I'm just always, I don't know, I'm just so oddly complex, I guess. And we I like your like, weird, girl. We I mean, like your weird. Because we are too. <laughs> uh, yeah. We are too in different ways, yeah. Yeah, what does it look like for you? Well, thanks for sharing that, first of all. So I'm going to have to try that. Probably turn on a fan and do it. Whatever you um, want. Right, right. I think it's important to lay the to lay the foundation kind of of time with him. And so that starts with prayer. I, a lot of times use instrumental praise music as well. And I just have to have quiet, you know, there's quite a few folks in my life. (laughs) And so if I, I can get away and be quiet, then I'm more likely to be able to hear from the Lord. So I will oftentimes start in reading um, different places in my Bible, you know, maybe following this our family devotional in the morning, what have you. And I will doodle some things and doodle God's word so that different parts stand out to me. And that helps me think about it and chew on it. And then it opens me up for further study. And I mean, goodness, you don't have to have a buffet to hear from the Lord. Like you don't have to read two chapters a day. Like Many a time I've walked away reading a verse and that's what I chew on for weeks. Yeah. So I wanted to grab, it was right behind me. This has been super helpful too. It's a day by day. uh, Really like the whole point is to get you to be growing in just intimacy with the Lord, not doing right. So much of our Christian walk is doing even to sit down and journal every day to spend X number of minutes doing this to write, to do the things. But um, so much of our Christian walk, as we see in the life of Jesus is being right. And so mm-hmm. anyway, this book has been super helpful too, because our small group was going through it. Um, Emotionally healthy spirituality, the day by day. And it's 
um, the 40 days, it's a 40 days of the morning and night of just experiencing his presence. So good. And it's Peter Scazzaro again with that. So anyway, that's oh, like, your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Pete. It's Pete. Right. His book. Right. <laughs> it's Pete. Anyway. Um, hey, we love you, everyone. Like, we're so grateful you're with us every single week. We love being with you. If you need anything, we're here for you. When I say that I'm the only one, uh, I mean it. And so if you email me at info at a wife like me.com, it's going to be me replying to you. Every single week, I send out an email to you every Friday. Uh, I love writing that. It's like the only time I write, it's funny when people say you don't write or do you ever write? I'm like, no. Then I'm like, wait a second. Every week I do, I guess. Um, and that's the I've only thing it. it's like just for you. So if you go to wife like me.com and you sign up for our free marriage resources, then you're on the email list as well. So you'll get those free resources. And then every week you'll get that email from me. Um, so anyway, kellybrinkman.com. She's always linked in our show notes as well. That's with two N's. And we love you, Kelly. Thank you for being with us. Yes, of course. And ladies, stay tuned for uh, part two here. We're going to unpack the rest. We will be back. <laughs>